Thanksgiving was a week ago, and if you're still feeling bloated from all the food and the leftovers, listen up. There's a reason that women have more tummy troubles than men, and here now to talk about it is Dr. Sean McCaffrey with the McCaffrey Family Health Center. Welcome back. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So why, as, especially as women, why are we so bloated? You know, a, a big part of it comes to overeating. <laughs> uh, you are a lot like a gas tank, and you can only hold so many gallons. Sure. And when you sit there and just keep pumping and pumping and pumping, it starts to spill out. So in the body, it has a very small amount that it can handle. It, it really, it's, it's really surprising how little the body can handle at one sitting. Okay. So we put too much in. The body says, oh, my God, there's too much here. <laughs> Shut everybody down. And Thanksgiving, we're all in a chair someplace, <laughs> right? Because the body's saying, clear all this out of the way. And then you wake back up and you want to get more. You get so more, yeah. the goal of the, to control that bloat is to really control the portions, not put in too much too fast. Okay, so you're saying don't uh, skip the food. Don't, you know, not enjoy the holiday, right. but just in smaller Yeah, portions. absolutely. And, and other things that get you in trouble are the, the, the sweets. You know, the cookies, the mm. breads, the grains, the cereals. That's what I was going to ask you. So what, what foods specifically make us feel more bloated than yeah, others? Those would, those would be it. I mean, anything that causes uh, the potential for fermentation. Fermentate, you know, when you make alcohols and things of that nature, they'll take fruit, they'll take uh, sometimes grains, and they'll ferment those to get the alcohol reserve off of that. Well, you're doing the exact same thing inside your body. And so you know if you eat something, and within about 30 minutes, you notice, whoosh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, that's fermentation. Hmm. If you wait about an hour or so and you blow it up, then it's not. Now you're looking at the gallbladder and how it breaks down food. So there's two different reasons you can blow it up down there. But the fermentation is the most common. So you're looking at breads, grains, mm. cereals, cookies, uh, uh, candies. Yeah, yummy the stuff, right? Us, yeah. <laughs> well, when I think about fermentation, I think about alcohol, like uh -huh. a beer or wine or things like that. Will those also make us feel bloated? They can. They absolutely can because it's really the same process. When you, when you look at how the body takes in a, a piece of bread, for example, it will actually try to ferment that a little bit if it can't digest it quickly or efficiently. And it's the enzymes inside your body that break that food down. Okay. So if you're lacking in those or you don't have enough or you crossed a certain age barrier where you don't produce as many anymore, your odds of getting a little more fermented and bloated happen quickly and alcohol does the exact same thing. Hmm. So how much money are people spending to fix this problem? Because you can go in the drugstore yeah. and just see loads of products on the shelves. Uh, it seems like a really costly problem. Extremely so. It's one of the top three things we spend, medic we spend money on every year for medications. Wow. Uh, you're, you're talking billions of dollars a year and you can just watch TV at night. You know, you can see uh, somebody's laxatives, somebody's anti-bloat medicine, somebody heartburn medicine they're all kind of that same family so it's something that when, when you're looking to the medication to fix these things they're temporary fixes the med is not really fixing it it's mm. just kind of saying okay you started a fire let's put it out but it's not helping you stop right is it's a band-aid absolutely well, how are you how do you fix this in your practice you know one of the big things we do in our practice is we do a urine uh, the lab, it's a test, and the urine test will tell you which of the food groups you're really struggling with. So I'll know, okay, is it the breads and the cereals, those carbohydrates, or is it more like the fats that we don't break down, or maybe the protein? So the, the urine kind of gets us on the right page. Now once we're on that page, then it's really a matter of just running an exam, and once you run that exam, we supplement in enzymes, because enzymes help break food down. But what's interesting about enzymes is they're not generic. They have to be targeted at a specific thing. So like Beano, for example, is a real sure. common one. That's a catch-all. It's a okay. generic. And it helps a little tiny bit, but it's not specific enough if you have a real type bloat issue. Okay. And real quickly, do we all need digestive enzymes? Yeah, everybody does. Do. Because, you know, we're in, a, we're in a society where the lion's share of our diet is, is you know, processed, man-made foods that lack those. Okay. And so, you know, a quick fix for somebody if they're looking and they're not sure what to do, apple cider vinegar works real well. Well, okay. you take a tablespoon of that and about four ounces of water, do it about 20 minutes before your meal, and just that alone will help activate some of those enzymes in your belly, and that will help calm some of that bloat down. If it doesn't work, that's when you got to do the urine test. Apple cider vinegar, got it. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. Sean McCaffrey, for being here. As always, we appreciate your input.